Climate change is a huge problem all around the world. Three major parts of this issue are precipitation and storm events, ice, snowpack, and permafrost, and ocean acidification. Precipitation is any product of the condensation of atmospheric water vapor that falls under gravity. There are four types of precipitation, these being rain, snow, sleet, and hail. The heavy loads of rain and precipitation generally come from heavy, heavy storms. A storm is born when there is high pressure systems surrounding the low pressure system. And these two different forces cause serious weather symptoms, such as strong winds and excessive precipitation. The action of warm air rising and cold air sinking convection plays a key role in the formation of severe thunderstorms. If the warm surface air is forced to rise, it will continue to rise because it is less dense than the surrounding air. The global average of precipitation is likely to increase in the future, and the northern areas are predicted to become wet, wetter while the southern areas <coughs> continue to get drier. This is bad for humanity because it can lead to a drought and a decrease in drinking water access. Heavy precipitation events are likely to increase, and more rain is likely to occur than snow or any other precipitation. The intensity of hurricanes is likely to increase due to global warming and warming of oceans, with the amount of rainfall predicted to increase by 6 to 18 percent and wind speeds increasing to 1 to 8 percent. Hurricanes are a threat to buildings, roads, crops, and other structures and our home lives. Another weather issue is high snowpack and permafrost. Snowpacks form from layers of snow that accumulate in geographic regions and high altitudes where the climbing includes cold weather for extended periods during the year. Permafrost is from permanently frozen land underlying soil or rock that remains. <coughs> permanently frozen found mainly in polar regions. In order to be classified as permafrost, the land must be frozen for two or more years. Permafrost is decreasing as Arctic ice is declining and the area of snow cover has continued to decrease since the 70s. Over the next century, sea ice is supposed to decrease by 50% and September Arctic sea ice by 25%. As the amount of ice decreases, so does the amount of winter sports we play as we humans play. The ice sheets of coastal sections are supposed to continue to melt and slide into the ocean. The melting of those ice sheets is predicted to lead to a rise in sea level. Glaciers are supposed to decrease, and the rate at which they decrease is supposed to increase. This is also supposed to lead to sea level rise. Since 1870, the sea level has increased by 8 inches due to warming temperatures melting the glaciers. So, sea level change in the next century is supposed to increase at a greater rate than in the past 50 years. Ice loss from Greenland and Arctic areas are predicted to add an extra one foot of sea level rise. As sea levels rise, not now. As sea levels rise, there is an increase in the amount of flooding that is likely to occur. Ocean acidification is the ongoing decrease in the pH of the Earth's oceans, caused by the uptake of carbon dioxide over time. The acidity of oceans has increased by 25% since the pre-industrial times. The pH of the oceans is said to continue to decrease. Ocean acidification also affects many. Many organizations believe that 
nature, not human activity, is primarily responsible for climate change. That means we can't control it. It is naturally occurring. Human releases of CO2. Of CO2 cannot cause climate change as any increases in CO2 are balanced by nature. Global warming and cooling are caused by fluctuations in the sun's heat. There has been no catastrophic warming recorded. What? Um, actually, most of the CO2 is caused from cars and factories, not natural. And there are ways to prevent uh, the cars that to come out. There are solar panels. Global warming and cooling are caused by fluctuations in the sun's heat. There has been no catastrophic warming reported. It actually takes more energy to produce the fuel than when you, you get when you burn it. Uh, I looked at a pie chart of people <coughs> surveyed from 2003 to 2006 taken by the MIT Energy Research Council. And more than half said that global warming was not an immediate problem and that little action was needed. About two-thirds of the warming in the 1990s was naturally caused. How are we sure global warming will continue? We aren't. The warming trend has already stopped and the, the forecasts of future warming are unreliable. Automobiles are the second largest source and create nearly 1.1 billion tons of CO2 annually. Technologies exist today to make cars run cleaner and burn less gas. The challenge is to be sure these solutions are put to use. Days have been warmer and colder than they are today and this wasn't linked to human influences. That only leads us to say that global warming is affecting our climate on an in irregular basis and it is naturally occurring. So at the moment there is nothing we can really do about it for now or until technology is improved. Global warming, in other words, is not a crisis, so why spend so much money on an unimportant cause? Okay, we found that um, global warming is not naturally occurring because global warming is because of greenhouse gases and humans put greenhouse gases in the air. Okay, is that the end? Okay, all right.